EVs are a scam. Ford and GM just saw their biggest loss yet, and this could literally mean no more EVs from them. From losing more than $5 billion on EVs to firing workers and hiding deadly EV issues, Ford and GM are now in big trouble. But why are people suddenly not buying EVs? Could General Motors really close its doors? If you were thinking of buying an EV, this video could literally make you never want to buy one again. Let me explain why. Our story begins in 2020. EVs are just starting to become trendy with Tesla's autopilot and everything else. Biden government saw the perfect opportunity and started imposing restrictions on gas cars. Biden even gave $9 billion to Ford and forced them to start selling more EVs, else pay hefty fine. The same thing was also done with GM. And you know what? Initially, people were buying EVs like crazy because they were the new cool thing in the market. But now, after a few years, EV owners are finally finally starting to share their horror stories, which I will talk about later in this video. So here's what happened. EV market is crashing hard, and Ford and GM are literally having to sell at a loss. Ford is losing about $36,000 on each car they sell, and GM is losing about $12,000. First up, let me tell you about what's happening at Ford. First off, Ford is bleeding money like crazy, with losses hitting over $4 billion. That's not just a small hiccup, it's a full-blown crisis. And if that that wasn't enough, they're also having to let go of hundreds of workers to cut down spending. CEO Jim Farley is trying to hide their true problems by asking people to see Ford as a startup, and startups lose money quite often. But this is where it gets even crazier. Despite spending billions of dollars on EVs, Ford just can't sell them off. Their own dealers are going against the company. Nearly 4,000 of them have said that they do not want to sell EVs. And you know what? It's the dealers who know the car market better than anyone. So when they say something is wrong, then they are definitely on to something. But Jim Farley did not listen and kept making EVs. In fact, he even started converting Ford's older factories into EV stations with newer equipment, making literally thousands of EVs. But things took a sharp turn and people stopped buying. If you were to go to a dealership today, you'd see loads of F-150s with more than 10 grand in discounts, along with Mustang Mach-E's lying there eating dust. The F-150 pickup has been America's number one pickup for more than 20 years, and now the situation is so bad that CEO Jim Farley announced that they will stop production of these pickups unless Ford recovers their lost profit. Meanwhile, Ford's gas car sales are going ballistic. Most people love hybrids and gas cars because A, they don't want range anxiety, Anxiety. And B, these cars literally cost half of what an EV costs. A major blow to these EV companies was when last year a consumer report accidentally exposed EV makers, telling how nearly 80% of EV buyers are facing reliability issues and 7 in 10 EV buyers saying that they would never buy an EV again. The report also mentioned three big issues with EVs that no one warned us about. But before we get into that, let us look at how General Motors has been handling the EV revolution. Their CEO, Mary Barra, is talking all sorts of wrong decisions. First up, she refused to lower the price of their EVs, literally saying that making EVs under $30,000 is almost impossible. Then she just signed a jaw-dropping $19 billion deal with LG to make what they're dubbing America's biggest cash cathode factory right in Tennessee. Last year, General Motors lost about $750 million due to their own workers going on strike, and don't even get me started on their poor EV sales. But despite all the alarms, Mary Barra is hell-bent on turning GM into a luxury car maker. In the second quarter of 2023 alone, their EV sales plummeted by 24%, a stark contrast of Tesla's massive sales figures. The company has had to slam the brakes on the production of several EV models, including the Equinox EV and Silverado EV due to lackluster interest. The once-hyped lineup is now facing an uncertain future, with production cutbacks and delay. The Bolt EV, which was their best-selling EV, is also discontinued. Another bright decision by Mary Barra. Okay, we get it. Both Ford and GM are taking a huge loss. But then, where is all the money coming from? Gas car sales. The thing is, all companies are finally starting to speak up against political leaders and going back to gas cars. Both Ford and GM made a big mistake that no one expected. In order to make EVs, they forgot to pay attention to their gas cars. And now GM is having to recall nearly 300,000 vehicles due to issues like panel gaps, doors opening while you're driving, brake failures, and much more. 
Ford is also up there, having to recall 100,000 vehicles. The heart of the problem? It all boils down to the oil pump drive belt or the drive belt tensioner going kaput, which is pretty much like the ticking time bomb under your hood. Imagine you're driving, wind in your hair, tunes blasting, and then BAM! Your vehicle loses control. In January, they had to recall a whopping 2 million vehicles due to a hazard where a trim piece on your car could fly off and create a hazard for other drivers. Now, for the main part, let us go over the three big issues that are turning people against EVs. First up, we have the EV fire risk. Cars that were designed to save the environment are catching fire and literally killing people. Now, before you think I'm exaggerating, let me break it down for you. These EV fires aren't your regular, oops, I left the stove on kind of fires. They're caused by something called thermal runaway in lithium ion batteries, the heart and soul of every EV. Picture this, one battery cell gets a bit too hot under the collar, maybe due to a defect or damage, and it starts a chain reaction. This isn't just a bit of smoke and sparks, it's a full on uncontrollable blaze that's tough as nails to put out. Firefighters are showing up to the scene scratching their heads because water and foam aren't doing the trick like they do with your typical car fire. And here's where it gets even scarier. These fires have led to deaths. Imagine cruising down the road thinking about what you'll have for dinner, and out of nowhere your car turns into a death trap. There have been reports, actual news stories, about folks who couldn't escape their EVs in time. One minute they're driving, the next they're trapped in a nightmare. We're not just talking about one brand here. It's an issue that's popping up across the board. From Tesla to Chevys to Hyundais, no one's immune. It's like playing Russian roulette with your car and nobody's signing up for that. Second big problem is the lack of proper charging infrastructure. So picture this, it's freezing cold, right? And if you thought just getting out of bed was tough, spare a thought for EV drivers. They're dealing with something that's turning into a major headache, charging their rides in the winter freeze. And I'm not just talking about a slight inconvenience, we're talking about a full-blown ordeal. In places like Skokie, Illinois, things have gotten so intense that drivers are facing long lines just to get to a charging station. Imagine waiting in line, watching your battery dip lower and lower, and worrying if you'll even make it to the front before your car just gives up. It's not just about the waiting in line. Once you're plugged in, it's like watching dry paint. The charging takes forever, and then to add insult to injury, the charge doesn't even hold up like it should. Drivers like Daryl Johnson, an Uber driver, are feeling the pinch, having to hit the charger twice a day because the battery just drains so quickly in the cold. Now, you might be wondering, why does the cold mess with EV batteries so much? Well, it turns out, cold temperatures are like kryptonite to EV batteries. There's this study from 2019 by AAA that showed how EV range can take a hit of more than 40% when you crank up the car heater in 20 degree weather. And it's not just the heater, the cold itself makes the battery work harder, which means it drains faster. This whole charging fiasco isn't just a one-off thing either. It's happening enough that drivers are getting towed because their batteries are giving up while they're waiting in line. And it's not just the weight of the slower charging. The cold zaps the battery life like nobody's business. Eddie Zipperstein, who runs a certified Tesla service center, noticed his car battery plummeting overnight just because of the cold. He's got some tips, like parking in a garage to keep the car warm and preconditioning the battery for charging, but it's all band-aids on a bigger issue. Third issue is something we're all aware about, but the government has actually tricked us into thinking something else. While they introduced a $7,500 EV tax credit, interest rates on car loans are also increased quietly, meaning you'd pay even more on your down payment. There's also the issue of expensive repairs because EVs can even cost you forty dollars to $50,000 just to get the battery replaced. Now, Ford and GM have finally started listening to the people and relaunching their older cars. It's a shame that while while Chinese brands and Tesla enjoy huge profits with poor quality, our own reliable brands are struggling to keep up. Are EVs just a pipe dream, pushed by politicians out of touch with what drivers really want? Or is this just a speed bump on the road to a greener future? One thing's for sure, we are not ready for EVs. Do you think politicians forced EVs upon us? Let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching.